Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Tim Harrigan. Um, I have Bree on our call here. We're going to go over some of the vibrant tests with you guys that we've been using for a while. In fact, Bree and I have been meaning to do these for, for a long time now. We've been using them in our practice quite often with patients. And so they're kind of complex. And that, that's why we use them, in fact, because most of the traditional methods for gathering information about our bodies, they're, they're honestly just outdated. They're incomplete. You know, for example, when somebody goes to get their thyroid check, Brie, most of the time people bring in blood work. That's like maybe two or three items about the thyroid. That's just not enough information. That's enough information technically to prescribe something to that person. It's not enough information for somebody to address the cause of fixing whatever that thing around the thyroid is causing though. It's a complex uh, process. So these tests are kind of overwhelming to some people, but there's technically nothing simple about the human body, right? We tell our patients every day that there's every second in our body, our bodies are incredible. I mean, every second our brain is controlling 30,000 billion billion chemical reactions. Every second that happens, wow. 30,000 billion billion, 30,000 billion billion. So when you understand that, you kind of realize how stupid we are actually, right? When we think we understand what's going on in the human body, we don't have a clue. Our bodies, our, our brains can't even comprehend what happens in one second in our human bodies. So one of the things that we've gotten good at with helping people is, you know, testing, not guessing, because uh, similar to a headache, uh, a thyroid issue, a low back issue, a heart issue, there's hundreds of contributing factors to that symptom. Uh, or hundreds of different causes for that one symptom. So if somebody gets a headache, I don't know if it's because they're dehydrated or if it's because of a hormonal issue or it's because of tight muscle in their neck or it's because of a micronutrient deficiency or because of this and that. It could be a brain tumor, right? But it'd be silly for us to assume that every person that comes in with a headache has a brain tumor. Well, that doesn't make sense. But the point is there's hundreds of reasons that contribute to this thing that I call a headache. So without testing, we're just, we're treating symptoms and that's never, that's not what I want to do with my health. That's not what I want to do with my family's health. We want to test, not guess, but the body's complex at the same time. So going for a yearly physical, we actually have a video on this. That's one of my pet peeves. I'm not saying don't or do or don't go for a yearly physical, but when you go in once a year and have 20 to 30 things tested in your body and your blood, most of those tests are designed for prescriptions, unfortunately. They're not designed to address the cause of a problem. So you go in, I get the 30 blood measurements, my cholesterol, my blood sugar, all those really basic things. They listen to my lungs, my heart. And then, you know, the doctor sends me home and says, you're healthy, uh, come back next year. So we're just sitting around waiting for things to happen. I'm waiting for my heart attack to finally occur, or I'm waiting for, you know, the big C word diagnosis, or I'm waiting for my headaches to be there for years to finally do something. So what I've done with myself and what we try to teach patients, it works incredibly well. I haven't had a prescription in my life in over 25 years. So you guys help me with this, but I actually get a lot of labs done on myself through different labs, mostly vibrant. Every quarter, every three to four months, I literally measure hundreds of things in my body, not because I'm sick, not because I have certain symptoms, but because I would have no clue what my Epstein bar numbers are, right? Until I get really sick, if I don't monitor those at least occasionally. So if I can measure thousands of different things in my body today, what is 30 things once a year going to tell me about myself? Virtually nothing. So what we're doing is waiting around, waiting for symptoms to occur, which at that point, again, the headache has hundreds of causes. The thyroid issue has hundreds of environmental causes, stress, adrenal fatigue, all those types of things. So your testing that we use is incredible and it's comprehensive. So we're going to go over a bunch of the different tests here, uh, little chunks, just a couple few minutes each to kind of guide you guys to see, you know, why would we use this test? What is getting tested? Who would we use this test on for what reasons we might use it? And then some of the traditional methods that somebody else might use instead. But I love you guys because it's so comprehensive. Uh, it's kind of a, a user-friendly approach. You guys print out incredible reports based on what the tests are. You're not just simply saying what's high and low all the time. It's more information about my body so I can actually learn and address that stuff in a proactive manner versus, again, waiting for things to get really bad. Then we start doing investigative tests Maybe after I get diagnosed with lupus or whatever it is, we want to be proactive and not just wait for those things to develop. So let's get into some of these tests now. 
Hey guys, it's Dr. Tim Harrigan and Bree, and we want to talk to you about your neurotransmitters. So what in the heck is a neurotransmitter? Such a weird word, but neuro means neurology. So my nervous system, which uh, first of all, my brain and spinal cord literally control everything in the body. So it's kind of an important word. Transmitters is kind of like I like to use the example of people know what hormones are, right? We know what progesterone and testosterone and, you know, hormones are kind of like our feel good molecules for our physical body, so to speak. They give me energy, drive, all those types of things. More important than that. So we call those kind of the feel good molecules. This is the feel good molecules for the brain. This is almost like the hormones in the brain that help your brain feel good, that help you with your memory, that help you with your sleep. So these are so important. And I don't know many people that have ever had these tested before they meet us. Uh, and it's a very important test. Again, we want to test, not guess. I can't really test what these are and what levels they are. So it's going to be much more challenging helping my brain if I don't have that information. So who might use this test? You know, what kind of symptoms or issues or maybe optimization goals somebody might have, Brie? And then what, what is in this test exactly? Yeah, those are great questions. So again, this is pretty wide ranging on, on symptoms here, but you'll see here, um, I mean, Obviously, neurotransmitters being those chemical messengers in, in the brain um, heavily influence your mood, um, you know, and who out there these days doesn't feel, um, you know, stressed and anxious and all of these different things. And, and a lot of people are dealing with these uh, mood disorders. So um, anxiety, bipolar, depression, um, people that have um, mental focus issues, uh, ADD, ADHD, um, adrenal dysfunction. This is a huge thing. Um, we see so many people um, have adrenal fatigue where they're just, their cortisol levels are all over the place on a hormone panel and they can't sleep and they have no energy and, you know, all of these things. Um, behavioral disorders, addiction, um, like you mentioned earlier, Dr. Tim, these are, you know, part of our hormones as well. So hormone imbalances, these go hand in hand with neurotransmitters, um, loss of appetite control, weight gain, weight loss, cravings, migraines, sexual dysfunction. Um, so it, it really does target so many different symptoms that a patient could be having. And that's why it's so important to test. And oftentimes it's not. Well, um, and, and how many people know about their hormones? Right? Everybody knows. It seems like everybody's on some sort of, they're getting hormone tests yearly. Now the, the majority yes. of the mainstream population knows about hormones. And yes. a lot of these people are not getting results or they're getting limited results. And it's a really expensive process to play around with that. If I'm missing something and I'm not checking these and I'm just checking those other hormones, the body hormones, uh, it, you're missing a lot of stuff. So I can't really fix that problem. Just shows you how complex the body is unless we also look at this and fix this at the same time. So you can't isolate systems. I can't isolate this from my cardiovascular system, from my immune system. Exactly. We have to look at all these things together or we're missing something because the symptoms don't guide us. So this is so important, especially if you You've come to like a plateau with your hormone treatments or whatever, you're missing something likely. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So you'll see the number of neurotransmitters we're looking at. It's a lot. There's 33 of them um, that, you know, range from excitatory um, all the way to inhibitory, but um, it can give us a lot of information. This test is really easy to collect as well. It's four urine samples that you collect over the course of a day. Um, so it doesn't require a blood draw or anything like that, but um, it can really just give us so much information. And like you said, when it, when we're looking at it along with hormones, um, they really do go hand in hand and you, you can't always fix one without the other. Um, right. honestly. So yeah, I think this is a great way to just easily test so many of these markers. And what we're going to discuss next uh, with everyone is just some statistics. I mean, people don't realize how serious this is and how every single human watching this really needs to have this test at least every two to three years, because these change all the time, just like my other hormones, they change constantly. So if I'm not constantly looking at what's, you know, getting lower or higher over time, then I'm not seeing these patterns and trends happen over time. Now we're dealing with a crisis eventually. Now I have, you know, the, the grandmother with, 
you know, Alzheimer's or I have, you know, it's much more severe when we wait for those, you know, just, oh, I hope it'll go away. A lot of people do that. Like, oh, I have these symptoms. I have foggy brain. Oh, it's probably just, you know, because it's winter, you know, we make all these excuses, yeah. but we don't have to let's test this stuff. We're going to go over some statistics now on brain health and why this test is so important for everybody to consider. So we'll get into that now, Brie. Absolutely. That sounds great. All right, guys, let's get into why this is a problem. So uh, I think we all need to get tested, first of all. Um, this is something that we're all going to deal with eventually. Uh, they're calling what's, uh, you know, the name Alzheimer's. They're actually calling it type 3 diabetes because it's so prevalent and there's a lot of sugar correlations and just our American diets in general and our American habits in general. So we have a crisis. We've never seen this many brain issues. We've never seen this many people having you know, foggy brain, uh, sleep issues, uh, depression, anxiety, all these things. So our physiology is suffering. We are in an absolute crisis. So a few books I want you to uh, read potentially at some point in your life. These are very important. Grain Brain talks about the correlation of sugars and carbohydrates and gluten and all these things and how it literally contributes to Alzheimer's. Uh, our gut, uh, the micro factor, an incredible book about enzymes in your gut and probiotics. This is essential. This is not, uh, you know, it, it, maybe I should do this. Your gut is absolutely suffering, which includes the brain. The brain and gut are, it, they, you can't separate them anymore. So the brain health affects my gut, gut affects brain and vice versa. Uh, and then the things we're doing to our brain, the bombardment of our brain through our additives and other things, you know, sweet deception. I recommend that one for artificial sweeteners. You should avoid these at all costs brain allergies. This is an incredible book that everybody should read. Our brain is our most valuable asset. Uh, so why are we doing things that affect the brain and inflammation of the brain? And then excitotoxins. These are things like the MSGs and otherwise. Uh, they're literally reacting in the brain kind of like cocaine does when you look at them under uh, EEG. Um, it's crazy. All these additives in America are absolutely affecting our brain. Um, this is the first time in history, by the way, our children will not outlive us as their parents. So you can see it's a big problem, no matter what we look at, whether it's food, exercise, screen time, um, our children will not outlive us uh, based on what's happening. It's insane. So we need to change our paradigm. Testing is part of how we do that with people. Uh, again, the first time in history where our, our current children, my kids, I have four children under 12 years old are not expected to live as long as their parents. So our environments are bombarded with chemicals and neurotoxins and all these things that affect our brain, that affect our neurotransmitters. So the brain, of course, is the central organ of stress and adaptation. Has anybody had stress over the past three, four years or throughout your whole life? Stress is inevitable. What I want to do is make my body bulletproof enough to handle stress, to handle the you know, losses we'll have in our lives and the job changes and the life is stressful. We want to bulletproof our body though, so we can handle what's going to be thrown at us, right? So the human brain is incredible. We treat it like a, you know, like, like a, a trash can most of the time. When you understand what's in our food and we're just eating things that taste good, it's insane what we're doing to this incredible computer that literally is the most complex computer on earth, yet it doesn't come with an owner's manual, right? So in the human brain, there are more than 125 trillion synapses, you guys, 125 trillion synapses just in the cerebral cortex, okay? That's equal, they say, to the number of stars in 1500 Milky Way galaxies. This brain that we have is incredible, but we have to treat it right. And this is how most of us are treating it. You know, we're, we we all fall prey to the ads and the delicious foods and the chemicals. Um, we need to do better. So disease is made. It is not caught, you guys. Disease is made. What that means is the amount of stress and food and exercise and sleep and things in my environment, that's what I have control of. I don't have control of my genetics, which really plays almost no part of this at all. I'll explain that in a second. But disease is made. Right? Why is our why are our kids you know health? Uh, why are they not going to live as long as us as their parents? Right? Well, our genetics haven't changed in the past fifty to hundred years, right? But something is changing, and I can say it's our environment. So disease is made; it is not caught. You guys, this is a hard one for people to understand. 
Uh, you know, people are drinking diet sodas, all these other chemicals that taste good, uh, that just contribute to all these brain issues. So I definitely urge you buy some of those books, read them, study your health. Like you've never studied anything in your life because it is the most important asset. It is your most important thing you'll ever take care of. Uh, and this is part of the reason why our kids are not outliving us. This literally rewires your brain negatively. The amount of screen time we're on our phones, our iPads or on our televisions, this is not good. We need to do better. You guys, we have a whole video on exercising with kids. If you want to check that out. Um, so disruption of neurological signaling, right? Remember how many trillions of synapses there are results in ADHD like behavioral manifestations, right? So if I can do things in my environment that stop bombarding these nerves, right? And the neurological signaling that occurs, don't you think things might get better? Or maybe maybe I don't need to go and get the ADD medication from my psychiatrist, or uh, maybe I'll have better sleep, or maybe, I, I don't know. Uh, you need to consider it though, because obviously it's a big problem. So when we do mess with this incredible brain, uh, we throw names at it, right? We, we diagnose you with all these things, generalized anxiety disorder, manic depressive, ADHD, you name it, right? We've all heard these terms before. And here's the treatments, right? Rillin, Prozac, Xanax. Now, always do what your doctor requests of you, right? Always follow your doctor's orders. However, I don't like this. If I can influence my brain and potentially prevent myself from needing these, why wouldn't I do that, right? Just makes sense. So I'm not a big fan of medication. Those of you that know us, there's a time and place for medications. Again, do what your doctor tells you. Uh, talk to your healthcare provider about getting on or off these medications. Uh, but the person that takes uh, medicine must recover twice. I didn't understand this two decades ago. Now I absolutely understand it. Once from the disease and then once from the medication, right? We can all agree medications do not address the cause of the problem. They never do. They never will. It's a management system at best, but we also know that drugs are synthetic chemicals that have patents on them. Well, synthetic chemicals in my body throw things off. It affects my gut, my liver, my kidneys, my filtering system. Your body depends on it. So your hormones change, my thyroid and adrenal glands change. And whenever you give the body something that produces, you have to be very careful with that, you guys, because my brain says, oh, you have enough of that thing, whether it's testosterone, melatonin, all these things, and it shuts down my own production of it. Well, that's dangerous. If I'm not using something, what do you think happens? If I don't use my muscles and bones, my muscles and bones go away, right? So if I'm not using the parts of my brain or organs that produce melatonin or testosterone or whatever it be, and I'm giving it to the body through a pill or an injection, right? What's that system do? Well, it shuts down and slows down and gets weaker and weaker and weaker faster over time now because it's not being used. Your brain says, I have enough of that thing. Stop creating that thing. And it goes away just like our muscles and bones. That's a tough one for people to understand. Genetics. We have a whole video on genetics as well. Guys, genetics are not what you think it is. Hereditary is not what you think it is. We all have bad genes in our body, whether it's the big C word or all these other things. We all have them. If we were to search hard enough, I'm going to find bad genes in you and your brother and sister and parents and myself. That's not the goal. We all know that bad genes are in our body somewhere, somehow. I don't care what gene it is, though. I don't care if it's a digestive gene or a lactose gene or a cancer gene, right? I don't care because it's still the environment. It's still what am I doing with my diet, my thoughts, my sleep or lack thereof, the stress in my life, how I move, how I exercise. It's still the environment that's going to determine if those genes are going to get programmed to turn on or turn off. They're light switches, guys. Scientists have proven this now where our genetics are light switches. You put those light switches in a bad environment, stressful environment, you're going to turn them on more likely. You put them in a better environment. I do all the things I need to know to have more energy and sleep better. Typically, you're going to keep those shut off. It's not a guarantee, but obviously there's a likelihood that you're going to live longer and do better when we can influence our environment that now affects my genes turn on or off, okay? So there's new research that reveals actually that the brain has the ability to adapt by rewiring the nervous system to resolve health issues and to often overcome untreatable illnesses. This is incredible, guys. The brain's a way of healing. I recommend that to every human. You need to learn how your brain works. We're all treating it like garbage, we need to do better and testing allows us to start helping somebody, getting them back on track 
So then when I fix my environment, then it starts to stick and heal better. But you guys have all heard of neuroplasticity. Until my brain and heart stop working, I can still influence things. I can still affect the chemical reactions, the 30,000 billion billion chemical reactions that occur every second of my body. So guys, do some testing. Let's check the neurotransmitters. It's going to give us a baseline. Then that gives us leverage to hopefully make some changes and start seeing those numbers improve because that's what we have control of, right? The test isn't to scare you. It's to get a baseline. Here's what's going on. Now we can make some changes that will help support our body's physiology versus a synthetic chemical maybe that I'm going to have to become dependent on that maybe makes some changes, but also comes with other irreversible or uh, permanent changes that might happen as well. So a big thing that we teach people and that I apply to myself is I don't want to manage a sickness. I want to constantly optimize and build my health every single day. I want to wake up every day and what 10 things can I do today that's going to make me healthier for tomorrow? Okay, so everything in our environment, we have control of to some degree. So that's what we want to focus on. We don't want to just wait for things to show up and then treat them. Uh, treating something usually doesn't reverse it or managing the symptoms, usually while creating other symptoms or turning off that check engine light uh, and it's silently getting worse over time. So reach out if you guys have any questions. Bye bye.